In the modern age, there are two ways of thinking about art making, abstract and figurative. As someone who has dabbled in both, let me say something controversial. Abstract art is much harder to make than you realize, and figurative art is much easier to make than you realize. Having said this, neither of these approaches require much in the way of imagination as an ingredient, since the inherent structure of the art is nine-tenths of the final product. Yes, some imagination is needed to make minor tweaks to the formula, but the body of work in both these approaches is so well established that proficiency becomes the sole measure of achievement. Therefore, the lowest common denominator among proficients becomes the prevailing style. There is more imagination in a Bierstadt landscape than there is in a conventional landscape due to its transformed elements. There is more imagination in a Cezanne landscape than there is in a Bierstadt landscape due to its transformed elements. There is more imagination in a Picasso still life than there is in a Cezanne still life due to its transformed elements. The point of departure between realistic subjects and how they are transformed grows rapidly during early modernism until realistic subjects are no longer needed. Early modernism may be described as a testament to the power of imagination until Marcel Duchamp wrote Our Mutt on a urinal and called it art. Imagination was required on Duchamp's part to come up with this clever gimmick. However, gimmickry of this sort was a Trojan horse going forward, as art would soon be overrun by confidence tricksters. Abstract art and figurative art are just simple enough in concept that you can dig a trench around them and then dare someone from the other camp to spit over it. As Bob Dylan once sang, he who is not busy being born is busy dying. And this is the way every art movement ends. It erupts into a turf war about smaller and smaller plots of arable soil. When Chuck Close painted this colossal photo-derivative portrait, he glimpsed both the possibilities of photorealism and also its end. Where do you go from here? When Jackson Pollock embarked on his drip painting journey, he both invented abstract expressionism and the means by which it would end. Where do you go from here? Invariably, there were hybrids of these two approaches also called figurative abstract. Michel Besquet added a layer of graffiti to this formula and anticipated postmodernism. Again, this approach has also become a dead end. Everything that can be said has been said. All that is left is to wrap up diminished expectation in current year politics or current year color swatch preferences and carry on. Art movements become victims of their own success, where more and more artists are able to meet the proficiency level. One slips from vitality and diversity of thought into repetition without being aware that one repeats. Ability is a commodity because one can always acquire more of it, while imagination is novelty since it is too difficult to replicate. This Scarcity makes it easy to marginalize or to damn it with faint praise by highlighting its overly customized nature. Anyone without imagination immediately realizes a lacking in themselves, so envy sets them in opposition to imagination. Joshua Reynolds was the great proficient of realism in his day and taught his winning formula at the Royal Academy of Arts in London. One of his students was William Blake, who did not embrace the winning formula, so was left out of a viable art career and stranded in poverty throughout his life. He was rediscovered later by the Romantics. Skill often lags behind imagination for the imaginative artist because imagination tends to get out front of the process, so the artist is compelled to invent new ways of doing things until skill catches up. Blake invented new ways to make prints from his visionary art. 
which he combined with his visionary poetry. Where does one find imagination and visual art? Well, in alternative comics, mostly. You can be as talented and as original as you want, but just know that you will never be welcomed in the citadel of high art. You could think of poet and artist William Blake as being the first alternative comics artist. On the other hand, imagination may invent a style, but a good imagination will not be a strict adherent to it. Imagination is always spilling over into other things, like creative writing, music, and so on. You are always acquiring new skills. The art world, however, is built around narrowly defined achievement, which is just good marketing. 